Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will tell you the six most important design patterns for Android developers. So make sure to listen and watch this till the end. In case you don't know what a design pattern is, it's basically, yeah, it's basically a solution, a blueprint for a problem that we get over and over again in programming. So there are just typical types of problems we can encounter as programmers and these design patterns are just good ways to solve these problems. And I will show you the six most important ones here that you need to understand as an Android developer. The first pattern I will talk about here is a pattern that you will probably know, but maybe you don't know that it's a design pattern. And it's nothing else than the singleton pattern. So in case you don't know what a singleton is, that's basically just an object, only a single instance exists in your entire code base. So yeah, you, you can't create multiple instances of this object. In Kotlin, that is very easy to accomplish. We just use these objects here instead of classes. And then we have these functions. We can put variables in here, whatever. And these functions, variables, we can just call from anywhere in our code just by writing singleton dot do something, singleton dot variable and so on. In Kotlin this is very easy, but in Java it's not. So in Java there is no native implementation of the singleton. And also if we compile this here to, to Java code, or rather um, decompile the bytecode of this Kotlin, uh, Kotlin file here, then we can see how this looks like in Java. For that we can simply go to tools, Kotlin, show Kotlin bytecode, and click decompile here. So that's the bytecode that is generated by this class. And if we decompile it, then we will get the Java code. So you can see we just have a normal class here in Java that's called singleton. And this class has a static reference to itself. So that is how the singleton pattern works. A, a class contains a static reference to itself. So this reference can be accessed from anywhere in your code. And with this instance here, so with this reference to itself, we can then simply access the function, do something, we can access variables if we would have some, and so on. That is not so relevant for you if you're a Kotlin developer, which I hope you are, uh, but I think it's still helpful to understand how this actually works behind the scenes here and how this would be implemented in uh, Java. But that is it for the singleton. Let's get to the second pattern I want to show you here, which is the factory pattern. I'm sure you have heard of that as well. So for example, view model factories. If you have dealt with view models, then you know these view model factories. And they use nothing less than the factory pattern. And I have created a very basic factory pattern setup here, which doesn't really have a practical use here. It's really hard to come up with a practical use case um, that's understandable without any um, context of a project. So this, you probably wouldn't do it like this in your code, but um, it, it shows you how the factory pattern works. Because in the end, what a factory does is it needs to decide and distinguish between similar types of objects and then create the desired one of that. So we just have different types of objects and then based on some logic, the factory needs to decide, okay, do I now create uh, class A? Do I now create class B or class C? And you can see that I created an enum class dialog type. We have three different dialog types here. On the one hand, the create chat dialog, delete message dialog, and edit message dialog. And then we have a seal class that represents the classes or the objects rather um, for the actual dialogs. Then here you can see we have our dialog factory. So this dialog factory now has a function create dialog that contains the logic to decide which of these dialogs it should actually create. You can see it takes a dialog type, which is one of these three, and it returns a dialog. And the logic here would be that when expression. So maybe you know that with view model factories that you have this when expression. So depending on the class of the view model, you return a different view model. And the same it's here, depending on the dialog type, you return the corresponding dialog that you want to create. And I actually should have replaced that here with the leave message dialog and added message dialog, of course. So that is how it should look like. So whenever you need a handy way to um, create objects that could be of multiple similar types, 
then you want to use the factory pattern. Next up, for the third pattern I want to show you here, I want to get to the builder pattern, which I'm sure you also have seen before. But um, yeah, let's take a look here. We have a hamburger class, because um, yeah, that is in the end something <laughs> that you can use to demonstrate the builder pattern quite well, because well, on a hamburger, you can choose what kind of toppings you want to have. So do you want cheese, do you want beef, onions, and feel free to add even more. But each of these could be optional. So what we will use here is this common builder pattern that we have in a class, in this hamburger class, called builder. And this class then contains functions to actually assign values to, to the local variables here. And if we then, in the end, call the build function, we finally create the hamburger here. And all of these functions to actually assign the values, they just return the builder itself. If we hit Control Q here, you can see they all return a hamburger.builder. To actually see how this really looks like, let's head over to our main activity. And you can see this is super readable here. We just create a hamburger. It's equal to hamburger.builder. And then we can say, hey, we have, we want to have beef on our burger. We don't want to have cheese on our burger, but we want to have onions on our burger. And when we're done, we just call that build, and that will then return a hamburger instance, as you can see, with exactly these properties. So that's just a very cool way to actually assign values to your properties of a class. Um, a common class from Android would be the material alert dialog builder, you can see. Here we could pass the context and then simply call these set background functions then set title set message and so on however this is still more the java way of doing that so i'm not sure if i would really use um, my own builder patterns in kotlin so that I, if i would really implement it like that because in kotlin we have name parameters and we have default parameters so we could just put all of all of these values here in the constructor, so let's quickly do that. Uh, we can simply remove all of that, make this a public constructor, and probably a data class, and then we could just assign default values. So by default, we want to have cheese, we want to have beef, and we don't want to have onions. Uh, I mean, false, of course. And then in our main activity, we can, instead of this, write hamburger. And here we can just assign the values to those um, toppings we actually want to have in our hamburger. So let's say we don't want to have cheese, then we just say cheese is equal to false. If we want to have onions, we set this to true. So this is basically the, <laughs> the, the easier Kotlin way of doing this. But I still find that's important to understand how these builders work, because even in Kotlin, you will deal with them all the time because yeah, you also deal with Java implementations. Then let's head over to the next pattern, which you might not know yet, because it's not so frequently used, but it's still um, a very helpful one, and that is the, the so-called facade pattern. That is probably the best if I show you that with a retrofit interface, as an example, because that's probably the, the best example to demonstrate that in an Android environment. So a facade pattern basically um, is used to hide code that you don't need to see, or rather to only show code that you should see. And that is exactly what, what this retrofit API interface here does. You only define this function to get hamburgers from your API, but um, just by defining this interface, you don't really define the, the underlying functionality. You don't need to care about how retrofit actually handles this, how retrofit makes the actual network calls, um, because all you really need is this function that just gives you your list of your freaking hamburgers. And everything that happens behind the scenes is something you don't really need to know and you don't need to care about in your application. So that is what we call a facade, because you only see the facade, so the, the surface of, of things, I could say. Next up, we have something you probably have heard of as well, and that is dependency injection. Let's head over to our app module. And here I destroyed my hamburger builder. That doesn't matter here. Dependency injection is a design pattern 
every single Android developer out there must know. It's so important, even though if you learn it, you won't directly understand why it's so important. But once you, you get more experience and you use it more often, you will realize how important dependency injection is. So if you're not even close to familiar with what dependency injection is, all it really means is passing an object its instance variables. So that could be something super simple, like just passing some constructor parameters that is called constructor injection. But usually in uh, bigger applications, we use a framework for that, like a dagger. And dagger will just provide us a very convenient environment to define our dependencies. So a dependency is in the end just an object you want to inject into some of your your classes. So you can see that could, for example, just be a hamburger. That could be your retrofit instance, your room database that you just need all over the place in your application. And then you have these modules with dagger in which you define how these dependencies are created. So for example, how your room database is created. So then dagger knows how it's created and then it can simply inject that into your classes. So you can use that in your main repository, in your other repository, whatever, wherever you need your database, you can simply inject it from the outside. And what's the benefit of that? Well, it allows you to super easily swap out your dependencies. So in the end, all you need to do to change the whole behavior of your app um, is to change one of these provides functions that just define how a specific object is created. And it also makes testing super easy because you can just define your own test modules in which you just have all the dependencies that you use for testing because usually for testing you have some fake dependencies, you don't want to use a real API, your real database. Instead, yeah, you just define some fake ones that just behave similar to the real ones and simulate the behavior. And then you can just do that in, inside of a test module and make sure that Dagger just uses these dependencies from the test module for your test cases and the dependencies from your app module for your production app. So whatever you do as an Android developer, learn dependency injection, it's super important. Let's get to the last design pattern here of this video, which you surely know even if you're a beginner in Android, and that is the adapter pattern. We all know RecyclerView adapters, but there are also other types of adapters like array adapters, for example, for spinners, and yeah, even more. An adapter is also nothing less than just a design pattern. You can see we have a RecyclerView adapter, and all it's supposed to do is it should take, in this case, a list of, of data, a list of items, in this case, hamburgers, and it should adapt it to UI or to whatever, to something else. In this case, in Android, it's usually UI. So it just takes a list of some kind of items and it adapts this list to actual layout items, to items you can see on the screen, to views. And yeah, that is, that is very helpful. You have this function on bind view holder in which you can assign values to your views. But yeah, this video is not about recycler view. I'm sure you know that, but it's also one of the most important design patterns here for Android because you will stumble over these adapters all the time. All right, if you like this video, then please let me know below if you want more of these videos. And if you do, then please also tell me what kind of videos you would like to have about um, having a cleaner code style. And apart from that, if you're also looking for more advanced Android courses, then you also want to check out the first link in this video's description which will lead you to my website and there you will find more advanced Android premium courses, which are a brilliant way to support me and my work, but most importantly to, to just boost your Android knowledge to the next level. So I wish you an excellent day and I really hope I can see you in the next video again. Bye bye.